Okay, this one is about the Pulse 21 Linux, and we're proceeding to uh, the ignition control and other gas-related uh, failures. Okay, the way this control is supposed to work is it's going to do a trial for ignition after 30 seconds of inducer operation. If it doesn't light, then it runs for a minute. That's kind of a pre-purge and safety out after three times like most of them do. If nothing happens after the control, if the light is out on the control and you can find power to the control, uh, the control has probably failed. Okay, now in the case of an ignition problem where it does, actually does ignite but does not prove ignition, then what we're going to see is an 8 second Okay, that was about an 8 second trial. Uh, and you can see it did not make, so at that point we're going to have to take a look and see what the flame rod reading is. Okay, if you look, now I've, I've removed the flame probe right here and hooked it through my microamp meter. And I'm waiting for it to light. Okay, you can see I'm reading about 5 microamps, a little better than 5 microamps. Okay, if this is the kind of situation you get where this thing is bebopping around like it's doing now, there you can see that and it went out, but it usually goes longer than the eight seconds of the trial for ignition. This one I don't think did at that point. This is where I'd be looking at the air flapper to see what kind of condition it's in because they do wear out. Okay, here you can see I've taken that front cover off. I'm going to take the insulation off and we're going to pull this out and take a look at it because it could be the problem. Okay, while I'm at this, uh, probably the most common failure with this furnace is there were heat exchanger problems with them. Now supposedly the uh, G21 like this one didn't have the problems that G14 had. However, I did see some that did. Uh, any time a service is done on this, a CO test should be done. Uh, if there's any question about its performance, you're going to have to do a pressure test. And a lot of guys don't carry the equipment for the pressure test. Uh, you can do it. I mean, you only take four pounds of pressure. But you pressure up the, uh, the heat exchanger on it, and it can't leak down in ten minutes. So... Uh, but unless you have that uh, and there's any problem with this thing at all then you're probably going to have to either have somebody do it uh, outside of yourself or uh, a, lot of, a lot of people just condemn them now uh, I'm not sure I absolutely agree with that but uh, because if it is operating normally I wouldn't be too concerned I absolutely tell people to have one of these things in the house have a CO detector. Uh, I mean, they're they're required now anyway. Uh, especially, I think in rentals, they have to have them. Uh, residences are supposed to have them if they're new, but they don't have to be retrofitted. Uh, but I would have one anyway. It's a good idea. Okay, let's say, let's say there's no uh, uh, no ignition, no noise when it starts. Anything, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, you might take and put your probes like I have here on the gas valve and see if there's any power coming to the gas valve. Now, there's not going to be any power until there's a trial for ignition. Okay, there we are. It's tried to light. I got voltage there. And after eight seconds, it shuts off. So there's power to it. 
then my problem has to be either in the gas valve or the gas supply. Okay, next we're going to go into uh, the spark igniter and the ignition control board.